This is the first one out of the couple shows we film where I get to take someone to where I go to eat. Granny's Grocery in Delhi. So this place has been here for a hundred years. What a vibe. It really is cute as hell. We could have gotten maybe two different sandwiches, but this one sounded so good. Breakfast sandwich on the actual croissant. Top golf, we got Ace Cam all day long. This is a nice little spot. Claw grip, Phil Mickelson. Bang at home. Bang. Oh, that's just casual birdie. Should we get out of here? <laughs> Should we go find another sport that's like harder? <laughs> Vine is where it started, right? Vine was like the OG TikTok before TikTok. That was where it all started for me. This is tough to admit, but there was a period in my life where I was double gloving. Two hands. Double? Oh, both, both, both hands. Gloves, both hands. No and way. And you get so much ridicule for that. Because like, of the? Because of the sweaty hands. No way. Dude, I have. You called me the clam in high school. Okay, so I like did, I, <laughs> you know? I did, I had a friend that was the same way and like we broed down about it, but somehow I like got through it. Like I snuck by it, like yeah. some, like always doing something. Yeah, before, oh yeah. You know, oh, like, oh, I'm sitting there like hand on an air vent. Oh, as I'm like days. showing up somewhere, I got an interview, I'm just hand on the air vent. For days. Ross Pomerantz, the man, the myth, the legend, the genius behind corporate bro. That's a generous term for it, but I'll take it. I mean, I literally, so this episode to me is like super exciting because this we've only done a few, yeah, but they've been friends of mine. And it's really rad because I get to, you know, like the last episode we did is dude, Sean Malto. Yep. I've known him for over 20 years, but I've never got to ask him like the why, the when, the where, you know, like get into it. Um, but with you, I'm like a huge fan and oh, literally thanks. know nothing about like your history or how it started yeah. or anything. So I'm super psyched about it. And, you know, Top Golf, we got Ace Cam all day long. Yeah, Ace Cam on every hole. Every hole we Love got Ace that. Cam. Yeah, yeah. We got some fucking amazing food to eat later. Yep. Stoked um, about that. I'm I'm excited. I want to learn all about you. Well, I'm honored to be here. Uh, you know, Top Golf. This is a nice little spot. It's good. Getting dialed with your irons is never a bad thing. No. You know, I, I'm like I'm that guy who actually feels more comfortable with a driver, so I'm a little nervous. Really? Yeah, yeah, I'm a little nervous. Dude, I am- My iron game is weak. I'm the complete opposite. Driver is like my fucking worst club. Can't figure it out. Well, I can't wait to see you show me the way here. Let's do it. Yeah, let's, 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 play, some, let's play some G. Let's play some G. I mean, look at this guy. That's in the bunker. That's just gonna be right on there, isn't it? Oh. oh. Look at us, we're too strong. Look at us. Pomerantz, I like saying your last name. <laughs> you know, Ukrainian. I love it. Downhill over the red flag. I mean, this is uh, this is just like master shit. Look at this guy. Just just stop there for your boy. He just straight off the plane. Just <laughs> got in no warm up. I look forward to missing that four footer. I like this two ball thing though. I do too. Have a wide ship when you can just yeah. lag it up there. You know what? I think too today, which I didn't do right there. I think I'm gonna try the claw grip. Oh, I'm gonna change my grip today for the first time because I feel like it feels good. Get out of the way, other ball. Go in. Oh my goodness. That's one par. Claw grip. Phil Mickelson. Bang it home. Oh man, just divot. stayed a little right. I compare skateboarding to golf. Like it yeah. is just like so close. And like some people, they're like trip on it and be like, dude, yeah, right. I mean, it's an action sport. So much shit going on. You're, you're probably more likely to get hurt skateboarding. 100 million, 100 million. <laughs> but like the mental, the, you have to, the posture, all the stuff, it's like, yeah. it's very similar. But does like golf kind of like compare to anything like in comedy or content or anything like mental? Yeah. I mean, golf is, the reason it works for everyone, it's just golf is life. It is. It's, it's unbeatable. Right. There's a lot of ways to do it. It's very process oriented. It's about ups and downs. It's about bouncing back. It's spiritual in a lot of ways. It, it really is, dude. So like when it's the best, it's the fucking best. It's the fucking best. It's the best. best. And when it's the worst, it, it's not great. It's not <laughs> it's great. It's not great, but it's about finding the best again. The mental part of it, everyone talks about the mental part and like, it's true. It's your perspective and your outlook will change the outcome in a lot of a lot of times 100 percent. and some days you got to realize like it's a throwaway this day like it's not going to get better right 
but at least I'm here. I could be somewhere else. Exactly. So. Exactly. So grew up East Coast, Atlanta. Atlanta. Yeah. Atlanta Amazing. guy. I uh, was a baseball player. I lived there till I was huge Atlanta Braves fan. Everyone asks because I live in the Bay now. They're like, you Giants fan? I'm like, I hate the Giants. Yeah, Can't yeah. stand the Giants. <laughs> I even like the Dodgers more than the Giants, and that wow. that, that offends them. Amazing. So um, moved out when I was 12 uh, to the West Coast, which was massive change. How is that like, dude? What? How was that? So I went from like, you know, every there were like three parallel streets in Atlanta, and all the kids across all the blocks, like we would just show up at each other's houses. We would just like roam the streets. We we're playing like hockey, street hockey. We were just hide and go seek tag across multiple blocks. And so all my friends were concentrated in like a three block area. Very Southern in my opinion. I moved out to the Bay. I lived 30 minutes from most of my friends. I lived in Marin County. So just across the Golden Gate Bridge. Yep. I had friends in San Francisco. I had friends in Oakland. I had some friends, you couldn't walk anywhere. I was like living up on a hill. That's insane. Which was weird. I was, you know, yeah, yeah. I was like a, just a street kid yeah, running yeah. around, like just <laughs> showing up places. And now I was like, hey, can I come over on Thursday at this time? Because my mom's got to drive me. So crazy. Uh, which, you know, definitely a different. I'm glad, I'll, all that to say, I'm really glad that I moved out to the Bay. And it's funny because a lot of my friends ended up in the Bay from Atlanta. Amazing. So Ross moved to the Bay and then, did I hear Stanford? I went to Occidental down here in LA for undergrad. Oh, okay. Played baseball there. Uh, you know, it was, it's funny, I mean, everything in my life was centered around trying to play baseball. Uh, my summers were all going to play, play baseball in some other state. I didn't really have a plan B. My plan B was always like, if I don't do this, I'll go be successful in business. <laughs> like, what does that mean? I don't know. But I ended up like many talentless ex-athletes in sales, in technology sales, being in the Bay Area. So a lot of the people I was with were college athletes, former pro athletes and uh, that was where, where it all started for me. The meat grinder of uh, technology sales. That's Part cool. of the Silicon Valley, I was working for Oracle, which a lot of people have heard of, but no one knows what they do. I still don't. Like, I have no idea. Technology stuff. Yeah. You know, I was like, oh, the, where the Warriors play, Oracle Arena, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> it wasn't anything like that. <laughs> um, but that's where I started making videos. But Vine is where it started, right? Vine was like the OG social. It was TikTok before TikTok. Dude, right? I mean, like, I remember Vine and I remember the people that I watched then and they're like famous now. Yeah. They're like, they yeah, do. I mean, some of them like really took off. Some of them like just didn't adapt. I mean, the biggest ones all kind of like had agents and like we're already living in a house together in LA. And right. I was definitely not that, you know. Um, I was doing videos on the side of my job for seven, seven years before I like went in full time. 2020, I went in full time. That's crazy. I could have gone earlier, but I think I was scared. I think I was one of those things where it was like, it's terrifying to work for yourself. Like it's all chaos. There's no path. There's no like track. It's not like you do this, you get promoted. You do this, you get promoted like a corporate job. Yeah. You know, the safety wasn't there, but you know, it was a side hustle that got to a point where I was like, I got to just commit. Oh, bang, bang. Oh, that's just casual birdie. Should we get out of here? Should we go find another sport that's like harder? <laughs> so when was it like, did you have like an aha moment? I had been doing corporate bro for two years, just for fun. Like people in the office, like sales is really hard. The job was really hard. You're miserable most of the time. So this was like my catharsis. This was like my healing and other people started liking it and so forth. And what happened was one of my friends actually sent my account to the pre-Barstool Barstool, which was called Total Frat Move. They published an article about me, which was like, this is the account you need to follow today. No way. And they did it, this was like 2015, so I started 2013, and they went on winter break. I guess they, they didn't publish anything for like four days, and my face was sitting on their front page for four days, and my account started to grow, and that was the first time I was like, oh, people think like, this is funny without knowing Ross. Like they think corporate bro is funny. They think this is funny. That's amazing. And that was kind of my aha moment of, oh shit, like I should take this seriously and sort of put some rigor behind the process. There's a whole world of tech sales and like corporate bros who are, you know, struggling, going through it. Yeah. Sorry I mean, for the audio, you know? <laughs> if I'm just rubbing up on this thing, it's hot as shit. <laughs> bro, I'm sweating. <laughs> Go in. Come on. 
What's wrong with me? <laughs> <laughs> you went to business school. Did you ever want to go to like comedy school or anything? Yeah, yeah I did. I almost went to comedy school. Uh, I went, so I applied to some business schools and I applied also to Second City Film School, comedy school in, um, in Chicago. And I got in there. Amazing. And I was like, whoa, I'm moving to Chicago. <laughs> and then like a month later I got into business school and I was like, oh fuck, what do I do? It was like the it was like the heart and the mind, right? Like I mean, that's what do I want to do? One. It's a weird, it's a weird, like a very strange, I mean, first of all, a huge opportunity, like very fortunate to even have the consideration. But I called Second City and I was like, hey, here's what I'm dealing with. Like I'm a creative, I want to be around creative people and make stuff. And they're like, literally the admissions person was like, dude, go to Stanford. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, look, a lot of people come to this school because they want to build out a portfolio. Mm. And she's like, you have one already. You've already got, you know, 100,000 followers. You're already making stuff. Mm. You can go to business school and continue making stuff, mm. you know, and, and find your way there. And I was like, honestly, super thankful. That's crazy, because then that, like you said, even for that being like validation, it's like, she's like, dude, you're already basically funny and you're doing shit. Like, go do some other stuff that's gonna further your career. Yeah, I mean, candidly, it was kind of like, raising my floor versus my ceiling in that moment. And obviously like going to a business school of Stanford's caliber is gonna raise the floor a lot. But at the same time, I had to be deliberate about finding ways to be creative there. They had a show, they had a, a big theater production every year called the GSB, Stanford Graduate School of Business Show. And you know, 200 people involved, theater production, original songs, all these things. And so I got to be the creative director of that. Amazing. And so I had another way to just do something creative around all these finance and like banking bros and- I mean, that's crazy. You know. Ross, got some flavor for you. Yes, please. Got a bunch of different kinds. Flavor time. Look at this one. We did for Dave's Hot Chicken. Oh, hell yeah. Did one for Dave's Hot Chicken. Yeah. <laughs> Three or four wings down, you're, you're good. Ooh, yeah. That's tasty. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Haven't done many episodes, but like this episode's like all new because A, fucking early call time. Early call time. Early call time. The other two guests took me to their food spots. This time I get to take you to mine. I heard you like a sandwich. I'm a big sandwich guy. I love it. We got something in store for you. <laughs> Sandwiches is just like a huge part of my childhood. Like all our family, we would walk down the block to this cute little sandwich shop. And that, like, I like, think about that. It's always got this weird sort of sentimental feeling when I eat sandwiches. Well, that makes sense for this because this is fucking my kind of adulthood here. It's like, like in the middle of all these houses. It's in the middle of houses. It wait till you see inside, she's so good. What a vibe. All the things, right? Granny's grocery. It really is cute as hell. I said <laughs> it, I'll say it again. Right there on the wall, a little golf with flavor. Ooh. Repping. Right here, front, front center. I'm like a creature of habit, but like, that was like my goal. I'm like, oh, cool. I'll have a different sandwich every single time I and come in And then you here. just have the same one every same time. Same one every time. Yeah, of course, of course. Every single time. My go-to is the long border. Basically like, it's like vegetarian, so it has every single vegetable and then yeah. I just add tuna. I'm looking at this easy E. I love it. I got the goods. Oh. <laughs> Let's do it. We could have gotten maybe two different sandwiches, but this one sounded so good. This one spoke to me though. <laughs> it was time. All right, so I got the easy E. You did too. I got that too. You got the easy E. It's a breakfast sandwich. And I was just like, I gotta do it, and, you know. We both did not realize because there is so much. Breakfast sandwich on the actual croissant. Yeah, the croissant. Game changer. Never tried a croissant on a breakfast sandwich till here. Cheers. You only get your first bite once. Oh. So this is it. This is, this it. is it. Let's do it. All, All right, right, cheers. Cheers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'll talk to you in a few minutes. I'm gonna eat this. <laughs> Dude, there's hot sauce, pepperoncinis, lettuce, cream cheese, chicken, eggs. eggs. Dude. It's perfect. It's perfect. It's really good. Ran it back. I love when shit hits, but like the fact that you went double time. I went back. Is amazing. I told myself I was gonna say this for later, but nah. I'm, a, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna have a bite. I'm gonna have a, <laughs> have a bite. Soft French roll. Oh my God. I saw a French roll and I was like, 
I made a little swap. I went from regular turkey to Cajun turkey. Yeah, I mean, you know, avocado. This is, you know, a little more standard, but, but uh, you know, the kid had to find out. Oh, the bread is so soft. I can fucking, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm tasting it, I feel like, right now, just watching you. You could sleep on that. <laughs> yeah. I like feel, I've, I feel alone. I feel scared and there's no, nothing for me to eat. You want a bite? Yeah, I'll take a bite. In the spirit of food and flavor, you know, we gotta, the boys. Yeah. <laughs> the boys. <Yeah. laughs> Thank you so much for coming out, my friend. I feel like there's a ton more stuff that you are doing and I'm just a huge fan and we could have gone forever, but um, yeah, pleasure to have you. We'll just have to run it back at some point. We have come to. Back to come back to see Granny. You know <laughs> I will. There's about 100 more sandwiches I need to try. <laughs> so I love it. Thank you for having me. This was a blast. Yeah. And um, good luck with everything on your end. I'll be watching the show, and I'll be telling everyone I know that I was on it. Amazing. So. <laughs>